Welcome back to episode 75 of Inside the Rapper Studio. We got Shane McCoy on. Why am I talking like this? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, got Shane McCoy on. Having a great interview talking about photojournalism in Baltimore. Talking about her project, West Baltimore Ruins. Um, also talking about a plethora of things. You know how these things go. So, probably invite her back on. Bring this back on. Who is in here? Hopefully everybody's having a good Friday. Um, my Friday is okay. It's just a bunch of paperwork and desk work. I want to say paperwork, just desk work. Um, finishing up projects, uh, starting projects, as you guys have seen. The Smash uh, League I really want to work on. I'm really excited for this, and I really hope everything goes smoothly with this next project, because I feel like this could really bring everybody together, and that's exactly what I want for this. Being as though we're all separated because of, like, you know, um, quarantine and COVID-19 and venues being shut down, I feel as though the one thing we can do with this time is to technologically connect and technologically, like, be as one. And I can help with that, so I'd much rather get into that bag, you know. Hopefully Shay rolls along really soon. I'm not getting my regulars today. Where, where, where's my, uh, <laughs> where's my LBs? Where's my abolished mom jails, you know? But it's all good. Uh, we're gonna get started with this interview. Um, I guess I could go straight into the photo thing. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> and I appreciate hey, it. Hey, oh. Yeah. Oh, let me turn that Wi-Fi back on. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> back on? Yep. All right. We are back in the building. Episode 75. We're inside the record. Got the special guest. Bye. The queen of the Canon camera. Jay McCoy, much again, thank you very much for joining us today and answering these TMZ and your business questions. Uh, I was we were talking about photojournalism before we got cut to commercial break. Um, could you elaborate what it looks like in your eyes what photojournalism is in 2020? Um, photojournalism for me in 2020 is just basically telling the telling the story without exploiting. We've been dealing with a lot of protests and, you know, a lot of things, political things going on. It's all, like, if you're out shooting, it's always important to just tell the truth. <laughs> tell the truth with your eyes. That's basically all it is. Don't, don't exploit people. People are quick to do that with their photography. Sometimes they don't even know they're doing it, so... Very true. Very true. Not to be like Katie or anything, but that is a thing that does happen within, like, I guess the photography scene. If there is a photography scene, I was about to say if there is. And it's like um, people be so pressed to be first to, you know, put stuff out, and they don't really think about their surroundings or, or what they, you know, what they actually took a picture of or what type of narrative this, this picture is going to tell. You know, so right. yeah. you got to think about those things when you go to certain things and shoot. Especially when it comes to like protests, especially in nowadays, where it's though pretty much uh, picture, um, picture, te photo technology, where it's those faces are being recognized and people can be tracked through these like protests just off the pictures that you take. Um, do you feel as though that affects uh, photo heavy for the ones that try to follow it with some? People just snap uh, whatever and share with. Them. Damn, that was a lot. I might need you to. <laughs> read. Right, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> so, with the future of photojournalism, especially with these uh, protests going on, there's a lot of like photo identity uh, technology going on, whereas though people get recognized through uh, through protests, through pictures being taken. Do you feel as though 
photographers or photojournalists should be more wary of the uh, pictures that's taken at protests and stations? Of course. Of course. I know the last couple times I've been out, I've been very uh, particular with what I shoot. And uh, I know the first time I went out to a protest, it was a youth protest. So I'm like, I'm not even going to hardly shoot anything because I don't want to put nobody's faces on the Internet for them to get caught up or nothing like that. Plus, they ask people to not take pictures. So be respectful. Even though I saw people doing whatever they wanted and I felt like it was very disrespectful. I'm like, let me worry about me and worry about protecting the people around me for real. So that's that's what type of time I was on. But, like, I haven't even been to many protests because I really just think, um, just got to be mindful of, like, what's going on around you and not and not just be so quick to shoot everything or be so quick to post everything because you never know. And, and like, especially nowadays, this is not 2015. This is not three, this, this is not back then. Like, shit is different now. And with, you know, them having, like, us having time to let shit settle for a few years and shit like that and then shit just emerging again. It's just like people have had time. The cops have probably had time to get their shit together because I know when we were out in 2015, the motherfuckers was recording us. So I'm pretty sure they didn't got their little shit, their little tech together and all that. So you just got to be careful. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I feel as though in the age that we're in now, there's like this culture to like overshare or just share whatever do you feel as though that kind of like bleeds into the photojournalism scene whereas though people just share whatever hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> it just it's just like you know it's just like with written journalism you know tmz might be quick to report that somebody died and that person didn't even die yet or something like that and you know it's all about being first and sometimes being first is not good. Most of the time being first is not good in journalism because <laughs> most of the time when you're reporting first, you don't have all of the information. So Absolutely. I learned that. I learned that at school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> learn that the hard way. Huh? Did you learn that in school or did you learn that the hard way? I learned it in school. I, I, but no, I both, a little bit of both. <laughs> because when I was a blogger, I did, like, when I was reporting on current events, I would be, like, trying to be first, because when I first started, I was under the impression when you're first, you know, your your, your blog post will get all the attention or whatever, whatever, but no, you gotta, you gotta take time to collect the facts, because you don't want nobody coming on your shit like, yo, you wrong, yo, that's wrong, because that's embarrassing, <laughs> as a writer. So, I'm going to switch gears real quick. Everybody that's in the building. That's what I got to do. Do you know, so. Do you shop for the car? Do you shop for the car? Yes, Nakia. Yeah, Nakia's here. I'm excited for quite some time. Dreams find you is here. He's right next to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was shouting you out. Oh shit! Thank you. <laughs> so, Miss McCoy, next thing I want to talk to you about is both being influencing and you being influenced. I want to cover the first one, influencing. Still, you're influencing anyone with uh, with your photography. Um. Yes. Definitely. Especially the youth. I've uh. I've taught a few like youth workshops and like they loved me and even like like yeah even my peers peers tell me all the time that I inspire them to do certain things or even inspire them to maybe not even photography but like something else they might have wanted to do but they just want to oh. get up and do it for real right um as far as me being inspired I'm inspired by my peers Definitely inspired by my peers. There's a lot of my peers and friends that are doing things, amazing things around the city, and I am inspired by that. But uh, specifically, like photojournalism-wise, when I first started, I, I will say I there wasn't really nobody that inspired that. That was something I really just did off the muscle for real. So, in terms of uh, the inspirations that's kind of surrounded you, 
do you feel as though that kind of brings camaraderie amongst the photographers in Baltimore? Say that one more time. You glitched. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel as though with the inspirations that surround you, do you feel as though that kind of brings a sense of camaraderie within the photography scene in Baltimore? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we want to have to go into detail because, like, I feel as though, I guess from my side, being the rapper, I don't hear much about a photography scene in Baltimore. It's just there that, is one. <laughs> there is one? Okay. Just, just it's say. one, but it's, like, it's kind of, like, separated. I will say that um, I do know a lot more uh, men photographers than women, but I do know a, a lot of good women photographers as well, and I wish they got more shine. You know what I'm saying? I feel like every time I'm mentioned as a photographer, I'm mentioned with a bunch of men photographers. When there's a lot of women oh, there's a lot of women photographers that deserve that shine. I mean, some of them like Sydney, uh, other <laughs> um, who, who would be other photographers, women photographers that you would recommend to everybody else? Get that shot. Um, definitely Sean Champion. She's uh her work is amazing, like amazing. She just posted some stuff today. Her coloring, I and I want her to teach me coloring, but her coloring on photos is amazing. Sydney, of course, that's my girl, that's my road dog. And her work is like so I feel like her work is so intricate, soft, very yeah, I, I like her I like Sydney stuff. Um who else? My friend Camille. She shoots film. Um, Who she Camille? does a huh? Who Camille? My friend Camille. No, no, I said Who Camille. Uh, what's her name? Cor I got a different Camille. I'm so sorry. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of Carissa. I thought of Carissa in uh, that they went to the city. I was thinking of Carissa. Oh, I know who she is though. Um, who else? There's a few others. My friend Joy, she's amazing. Um, there's a lot more, but I can't remember them off top. But it's a lot of us. It's a lot of us here. It's all good. I feel like uh, the one thing I can do, at least with the little bit of platform that I do have, is try to like spread the word on other photographers or other like women of color photographers or just like anybody that doesn't really get that much enough shine as oppressed people. So. Do you feel as though uh, there could be more inclusion within the photography scene? Do you mean though it's almost like a boys club? Definitely. Definitely room for inclusivity with photographers. And I feel like a lot of times we feel like we got to compete and shit like that. Like, I don't feel like that. But I, I see it a lot. And it's just like, yo, we all have our own lanes. We all have our different type of work. We all have, like, our own styles and shit like that. And it's like, okay, why can't we just do shit together? And I found, you know, I found that that, that uh, group for me, like, where I, I, there's, oh, forgot my friend Asia. Asia, she on point two. She just was in Be More Art. You know, she got some shit going on, too. Um, but, yeah, we, I found me a little niche of women photographers that I really bang with, that, like, really I know – if we was to collab on something, like, it wouldn't be no type of, like, animosity, no competition. We just all working together, so. But I think, it, I definitely think there's more room for that, though. Absolutely. I, I can appreciate that, man. Thanks so much, Shay. You are. <laughs> uh, I want to switch gears to talk more about uh, your billboard work, because you seem to be on the LED um, billboard in Mount, not, it's not Mount Vernon, it's Station North, like, a ton. Like you're almost like the staple person that's on there. Uh, what when would your first placement on that billboard be? You said what was it? Yeah. Damn, that was like 2000. I want to say 17. Big flex. Big flex. 2017 was my first time on there, but it's really only it's really all you have to do is submit your work to it. And you just, uh, they pick you. I don't know what they pick you based on, but they if they pick you, you go up on there. I've been up on there about five times. 
And I think I'm going back. I'm going back up on there this year. So I don't know when, but yeah. We love to see it. You but also the other. Had a, uh, uh, I guess I don't want to say a digital billboard, but an analog billboard. Whereas though you had your work plastered on like a like a Lamar type with like the photo screen thing. You talking about the you talking about the billboard I have down South Baltimore? There you go. It's for the census. So I um I've been working with Southwest Baltimore partnership um uh, because that is like the area I'm uh, originally from. And like I've been doing like their photography and stuff like that. So I did some photography work for that billboard and we also just did some photography work for the new billboard that's going to go up and replace that. So it feels good to have a billboard up near my old middle school, like literally around the corner from it. It's like cool as shit. <laughs> that must be one of those like dreams come true moments. Dreams find G moments. Uh-huh. <laughs> great plug, great plug. So with the billboards and uh, with the bill- with the billboard work that you're doing in Southwest, and also the billboard work in um. Station Norris. You also have big clientele that you work with. You previously worked with um, L. Rogers Jr. and his band that's been doing the outside, uh, the outside performances as of lately, and it actually garnered some attention towards ABC Two News, which is a great thing. He starts out to everybody that's involved with that. Um, you also had your work posted on ABC Two News because of that, correct? Yes, because um, so. The whole tour started because um, Cheyenne, uh, my friend Cheyenne, she just dropped a project called Vacant. And I was the photographer for the project, well, one of them. Um, I was the photographer for the cover and some more of the marketing images for the project. Um, but it was amazing to, like, see my work, like, on the news. Like, that was crazy. <laughs> How was it, like, just kind of collecting all of these, like, I guess placements. I don't want to say placements because I don't know what the term is for photography. But just having the billboard pack, you got your work put on there. You're all, uh, you got all special. Sold in red, say that again. You also had your work sold in red, correct? Um, it's currently still in red, Emma's, because I was supposed to have a show before COVID took over the world. So my work is still in there and it's still for sale. <laughs> if it's open, how much is it going for? Ah, uh, shoot. Well, I have about 15 photos uh, framed in there. So they're different prices. <laughs> yeah. It was supposed to be like a whole like gallery show for real. Gotcha. But yeah, COVID canceled all that. Gotcha. So with the work that you put in with, um, I got switching back to uh, the work that you've done with your friend Cheyenne and doing the cover work. Was that your first art, album artwork that you've done with your photography? No, that might have been my fourth. Mm. Um, Cheyenne's is probably the most popular, though. Uh. But I've done, um, I just actually shot a whole, like, shoot for a rapper. He's from here. Um, I don't know when they're going to use it, how they're going to use it, but it was supposed to be for his for an album or for a project. Um, and then I shot with another person who has uh, music on uh, Spotify and Tidal. And I, uh, my photography was the cover for that single, I believe. And I had another person who blocked me after they used my work. But, you know, whatever. Uh, he used my, uh, he used a photo of mine for a cover. Um, for a single too, so. Uh, it really sucks to have that. Business. Huh? I said it must really suck to have bad business done, especially as a photographer. Yeah, he blocked me over some personal stuff though. Like it wasn't even. Yeah. I figured. I mean, as a rapper, we do shitty stuff, but as a rapper that's into the shitty stuff, I'm pretty sure it's even worse. So. We're just going to skip by, skip past that. Okay. You also do work with plants. You're a plant mother. You have many children. You have the green stump that I've seen on IG. When did you incur this love for botany? Um, 
So I was out of work back in March, well, back in April, because I got tested for COVID. So I had to isolate myself and be home. So once I got my results back and I was able to leave the house, I don't know what made me start. I think because I had like this whole idea of how I wanted my apartment in my mind. So I'm like, okay, what, okay, let me get started on this project. I, I just consider my apartment a project. So I started buying plants. Now I have like 15. I have some plants hanging from my bed. Like it's looking like real jungly in there. <laughs> so, yeah. But you said, what's my favorite plant? Yeah, your favorite child. My favorite child would have to be Jasper, which is my um, neon pothos. That was my first plant that I got in my house. Someone actually bought that one for me as a gift. Gotcha. Do all, the, do all the plants have different, um, I guess, specialties or capabilities? Um, not that I know of. I, I mean, they have made the house easy and breathable, <laughs> but, um, they don't have like special properties that I know of or that I researched. No. Gotcha. Cause some people like get like certain plants like the eucalyptus or the aloe and things like that. Oh no, I don't have none of those kind of plants yet. Gotcha. Just regular yeah. greenery. But they are on the way? Yeah, they're on the way. All right. <laughs> so, do you feel as though after all the plants that you collected during COVID-19 and during the quarantine, you probably have a photo series of all those? Yes. I take pictures of all my children. I don't leave none of them out. <laughs> I, I really, I don't, I don't know. I treat plants as people. I don't know why. But when I talk to them, they grow. They definitely grow. Like, I see a new leaf on one of my plants, like, every day. Yeah. And I think the one thing that really, like, comes out with plants, and especially how it ties in with photography, a lot of the times plants are used as a main subject. Uh, how often do you use plants as subjects within your work? Um, not that often, but I do love greenery. So if I'm near, if I'm like in a place where there's greenery, I'll use it. But I don't really use plants as props. But if it's already there, then we're going to use it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So I want to uh, switch gears for a bit and talk about your website, um, shaymccoyphotography.com. Um, I kind of want to type it in, but my phone's put somewhere. So... With the work that you do on the uh, website, first of all, it's brilliant. It's a lot of great work and it's a lot of great clientele and it's a lot of great um, content. Um, did the start from no, um, that uncommon realists and that are two separate websites. Gotcha. Yeah, they're two separate websites. So, um, yeah, I haven't been on uncommon realists in like. Sorry, a Zeddy just walked past, but um, I haven't been, <laughs> I haven't been on my web, my blog in like a year or two. But I am currently writing something to publish, um, about photography. Um, but yeah, they're separate. I keep them separate. Yeah, I kind of like the OG. Never I talk about I'm a Phyllis. Yeah, she, you one of the OGs. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Work that you've done in Shea McCord photography, uh, what would you, how would you describe your clientele of the work that you have in the website? Because it kind of just vast between everything. Um, it ranges from corporate clients to fucking just random people on the street to my friends who always talk about, I don't model, but when I photograph them, they look like models. So... Yeah, it, it, it's a wide range of different people, but I want it to be that way. I don't want to shoot, I, even though there, I do have some repeat people that I shoot, I always try to pull different people so that, like, and I always, every time that there's a chance to be published, I try to use pictures of, like, friends or pictures of, like, people I know so that they can see themselves publishing something or whatever and make them feel good as well. Got you. Do you feel as though friends are your favorite subjects to uh, shoot? Uh, no. 
<laughs> Why not? not 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 on no like shade stuff but like i just really like people who i mean they might be friends or they might be like associates like people i don't speak to every day but i know them and then it's like you know they they say their own model they say they don't know how to do this and do that and they they're the best people for me to work with because it's like we about to we about to have fun we about to do everything and then the photo shoot comes out great that's really good to know shout out to shade and coach for such a great interview right now um shout out to everybody that's been joining us in this live too um i didn't I shout out local role but everybody just kind of stuck rolling in shout out to club Rants. shout out to shout out to air jacobs I see the vibes. We got Katie Point O, Ayo Tez. Who else? We got Brandon Woody. Brandon Woody, the boy is in here. Wonderful. Got- I recently shot him too, and 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 yo, that shoot was very great, very very great, very 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 great. That shoot was yeah. I think I seen that. Was it black and white? It was black and white. It was color. Yeah, we we did it all. Gotcha. Well, Shay McCoy. Do you have any last words, any last promotions, any last propaganda for them? I just want to thank my mama. Um, <laughs> no, but I really thank y'all for supporting me. I thank you for having me, and um, I really appreciate everybody's support. Um, be on the lookout, because there's some shit coming y'all way from me. So that's all I got to say. And my hair look good, y'all. <laughs> I didn't want to just like say, oh my God, the breeze, oh, the blocks. But yeah, it, it, you, you got it going on. It's it's well, well styled. Um, who styled it? Oh, damn. Are you buffering? I can't hear him no more. What are you saying? Okay. <laughs> no score. Go up. All right, we're good now. So, All right. Coming up next on Inside the Rapper Studio. Uh, I don't know. It's next week's episode. So I'll give it enough for it tomorrow. Um, we got one last password for the giveaway for Inside the Rapper Studio. Um, with this giveaway, for ones that don't know, get yourself a hat, get yourself a roll, get yourself a sticker for the free. Last pass. So do your guests get any? Say again? Do your guests get robes? Um, if y'all enter the passwords. Hey yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh we already have four passwords. The last password for this week is Claire. C L A I R Claire. Get that last password. Give me the uh other four. Get yourself a hat. Get yourself a robe. Get yourself a sticker. It's free. Stuff, free stuff, people. Real easy to get. I like to thank my wonderful guest of episode seventy-five, Shay McCord, for giving me such a great interview. Thank you so much, Shay. Uh, no problemo. Uh, it's always love. I like to thank you guys for stopping in, whether it's one second, one minute, or the entire episode. Uh, no shouts out to IG because you guys ruined it. Yeah, you. I had to do two parts. I don't like doing two parts. I like getting. <laughs> Shop. Oh, Malcolm's in the building. Yo, Malcolm. Hi, Malcolm. That's my baby. Yo, is that? You know it's me, motherfucker. You know what I'm talking about. You know it's Hi, Malcolm. Yo. Hey. Okay. On the show, seriously. But, of course, this is another episode of Inside the Rapper Studio. I'd like to thank all you guys for stopping by. And as always, wash your hands, wear a mask. Wash your ass. Wash your ass, too. But I feel like I shouldn't say that. But since we're on the subject, wash your ass, too. Oof, wash that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jay. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Peace.